Yes, very pleased to say we are joined by the CEO of HSBC, Noel Quinn, on that pre-tax profit coming in for the most recent quarter, 7.71 billion. As you said, a little bit below the estimates, but the three billion dollar buyback is a standout. Noel, what do these results? Good morning, Noel. What do these results? Good morning, Tom. Do you think about the prospects of the bank in the quarters ahead? Well, I'm very pleased in that we've reported $29.4 billion profit for the first nine months of this year. As you say, 7.74 Q3. That puts us on a return on tangible equity of around 17% uh, for the nine months. Um, Very pleased with the $3 billion uh, buyback that we've announced today, up to $3 billion. That takes it to $7 billion for the full year. Um, And I'm also pleased that we've announced another $0.10 dividend. Um, In terms of the slight miss that people have talked about, I do want to draw attention to the fact we we booked some treasury losses on on some treasury instruments because we were seeking longer duration, higher yielding treasury instruments. And that loss of 600 million that we booked in Q3 will be fully recovered over subsequent quarters. So that's all about our hedging strategy rather than an economic loss. It's a timing difference between a loss today and future profits over subsequent quarters. I think we're well positioned. Uh, We have a uh, good momentum in the business. And I think that's evident in our wealth performance. Our revenue was up 6% in the quarter. Um, Our trading assets or our wealth balances were up 12%, I I think. And we (laughs) took in around about $34 billion of net new invested assets in the quarter bringing our total growth in our net new invested assets to around about 77 billion for the past 12 months. So that's good momentum in diversifying our revenue stream. Mm. No, on the buyback, it, d- it does come in higher, higher than the estimates, $3 billion uh, US, US dollars. You know this be- better than most. Investors always want yep. more. Is there, is there scope for more, Noel? Well, listen, we've got very strong capital generation at the moment. As you can see in today's results, um, we've also announced whether when we sell our Canadian business in Q1, it's our intention to do a further special dividend in Q1 of 21 cents. And then we'll consider what we do with the remaining proceeds of that um, that disposal. So I think we've got good capital generation this year and good capital generation prospects for the next 12, 24 months as well. I think we're in, in a good position uh, to reward our shareholders for their patience and loyalty over the past few years. On the Canadian business, there has been pushback from the opposition party, the main opposition party, the Conservative Party in Canada around RBC taking over this Canadian business. What gives you the confidence? You've reiterated you think the deal does get done by the first quarter of next year. What gives you the confidence that that indeed does come to pass? Well, we're having good dialogue with the Canadian authorities and the regulators. We're confident that the deal will uh, close in Q1 of next year. And, and we, we continue to work on that basis. I want to talk a little bit about the, the China part of the story as well, Noel. You did put uh, book some, some, some charges there of around, what, half a billion US dollars in terms yep. of the provision charges uh, on, on some of the losses there. And you've talked about, this in the statement, the uncertainty in the commercial real estate market of China. How do you see that story evolving? Is it fair to assume that further charges of about that size and that scope are going to be coming through in the quarters ahead? Well, I think we signaled at the end of last year that we had a plausible downside scenario of a potential for an extra $1 billion of ECLs on our China real estate exposure. If you look at what we've done in Q3, half a billion, plus what we took in the first half, we booked around about $800 million of that $1 billion plausible downside. Uh, there is the potential for a top-up to that and book the remaining of the billion in Q4. But I think we're relatively comfortable with where we sit at the moment on our provisions. And by the end of this year, we'll have been well provided on our exposures in China. Clearly, it's an evolving situation. We'll keep it under review. Um, But we think we're going to be in a, a a good position by the end of this year on our provisioning. And what is your team on the ground in China telling you about when they think the commercial real estate crisis is, is going to end, is going to bottom out, uh, at least. Is 2024 a, a realistic prospect, Noel? What is, your, what is your sense at this point? Yeah, I, I mean, I think the, the market, the commercial real estate market in China has, has had a huge policy correction. And I think we are at the bottom of the market. 
but it will take quite a while for that market to recover and regain momentum. So I'm not expecting a massive reversal in that sector in the next 12 months or so, but I do expect it to be a gradual improvement from where we are. I am encouraged by some of the policy measures that were announced recently. They will take time to have effect, so I'm not expecting a rapid turnaround. Uh, but I do think that we're at the bottom of the uh, the market and we'll now have to have a slow recovery. And I think that is a very determined slow recovery because I don't think that the authorities would have done what they've done with policy correction then to do a quick reversal from here. Operating expenses up 2%, Noel. Part of that down to technology investments, part of that down to uh, performance-related pay. How do you see the cost picture uh, evolving in the quarters ahead? Well, let me just clarify. Uh, for, the, for the nine months here today, our operating expenses are actually down 2% on a reported basis year on year. Um, and in the quarter, they were up 1% Q3 to Q3. But what we did is we set ourselves a target because last year we had some one-off restructuring charges. We set ourselves a target of keeping our cost growth to around about 3%. Now, in the quarter, we've signaled that we have going to move that 3% to 4% because we have allowed some additional digitization and IT spend to, to come into the P&L. That's around about a percent or 300 million. And we have signaled that potentially in Q4, because of the very strong trading performance of the business, we may well top up our variable pay by an extra 1% or 300 million. Now, I just want to put that into the context mm. of a business that has reported 29.4 billion profit in the first nine months of this year. We think there are two sensible decisions to take, continue to invest in technology and digitization, and reward our people for what has been a very strong performance in the year and over the past three or four years in restructuring the bank. And that goes alongside what we're doing with dividends and buybacks for our shareholders. Mm. We remain no, very GF focused on mm. cost. Sorry, Tom, we do remain very focused on cost discipline. And we're really trying to drive our investment in cost into digitization and technology rather than just headcount and headcount growth, mm. but we remain with a very strong cost discipline. OK, I need to ask you about the, the geopolitics at the moment, of course, the Israel-Hamas conflict. You are the biggest international lender in Israel. Has the conflict, has the crisis in that part of the world, has it impacted the business? Has it impacted operations for HSBC in Israel? Are you changing anything on the ground there, Noel? Well, it's heartbreaking to see what's taking place in Israel and, and in Gaza. The loss of innocent lives is absolutely heartbreaking. We are not changing our strategy in Israel. We're not changing our strategy in the Middle East. We will continue to support our people, our clients, in these extremely difficult times. Most of our clients and people have been affected directly or indirectly by what's taking place. And, and for that reason, we'll do everything we can to support them. We all hope that there will be a political solution to try and de-escalate and contain this situation and that, that, can, that can be forthcoming. Noel, on the macro front, a number of big central banks, of course, making their decisions this week, the BOE, the Fed, the BOJ. What is yep. your sense of where we are in the rate cycle? Are you in the sense that we are now at peak rates? Are you in the higher for longer camp? Uh, what is your assessment? Yeah, I think... What's coming around the corner in the next few days is probably a hold position because I do think we're at a level of interest rates now that we need to give them time to work on the inflationary environment. Uh, so I do believe it will be hold. I do believe it's higher for longer um, because I do think there are underlying inflationary pressures still in the global economy as a consequence of supply chain repositioning, the unit economics of supply chains are not as favorable today because of supply chain repositioning as they were a few years ago. So I think it will be lo higher for longer. And of course, the rate environment has to be factored in when you're thinking about acquisitions. You've made a number of bolt-on acquisitions, Noel, uh, over the last few years. Yeah. Do you continue to see appetite? Are there prospects out there still? And, and kind of what is the size and scope of any deals you may be looking at? Yeah, I do think there are still opportunities, and most of our acquisitions have been around revenue diversification and skills acquisition, you know, particularly in our wealth business, particularly in Asia. 
bringing in new distribution capabilities, bringing in new product capabilities. That's evidence in the deal we've agreed with Citibank on their China wealth business. That's all part and parcel of our revenue diversification strategy and allows us to accelerate our growth opportunities, particularly across Asia. Um, I think there'll be bolt-ons rather than um, significant acquisitions. I think it's right to continue to build out capabilities via bolt-ons. And what I look at it as is acceleration of organic growth, um, supporting what is a core strategy, but doing it faster and more effectively. Noel Quinn, CEO of HSBC on those third quarter results and projecting ahead as well for the bank. Thank you very much for your time.